As I said at the top of the show, today we're going to talk about childhood trauma and its impact on students. Our first guest is going to help us understand the research. Dr. Katie Rosenbaum, she is the research scholar at the Duke University Center for Child and Family Policy. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I guess I should say welcome back to the show. You were on about a year ago yeah. when we, when the forum had just completed the study on uh, around childhood trauma and learning. So let's just get some definitional things up front. Absolutely. What is trauma? So trauma is not the event itself. It's a person's reaction to an event that is so threatening to them that it overwhelms their ability to cope with it. And that can include things that, like, like violence in the community and the home, but it also can include things like natural disasters or accidents. And for a child, those threats can be an, a caregiver who's not able to provide their basic needs due to poverty, due to substance abuse or mental illness, or due to the caregiver being absent from the home. I think that's interesting. The, the trauma is the response. So that you could actually, in, you could have, say, uh, children in the same home, and something affects them differently. Very and you differently. really talk about Absolutely. the effect. All right, the ACEs. Mm -hmm. Adverse childhood experiences. We're hearing more about that, mm -hmm. which is actually, it's a good thing that we're hearing more about it to learn more about it. But so, what are ACEs and sort of comparing that to what is about trauma? So, ACEs kind of come from a different perspective. So, instead of thinking about the reaction, an adverse childhood experience just talks about what did you experience as a child. So, it started with this landmark study back in the late 1990s when the Centers for Disease Control and Kaiser Permanente did a study of 17,000 adults and asked them about 10 different categories of adversity, just like the ones that I just mentioned. Yeah, that we've they actually have got some coming up on the screen Great. right now so that our yeah. viewers can see the, the kinds of categories. Go ahead. So exactly, so, so they counted up the number of these areas that someone might have experienced in their childhood, and what they found really amazed them, that 64% of the adults in this study reported at least one of these areas of adversity in their childhoods, and in fact, more than one in five, about 22%, reported adversity in three or more categories of these um, ACEs in their childhood. Now, why was Kaiser and, and the Center for Disease Control, I mean, why were they asking people about their childhood experiences right. in the first place? Right. Well, you know, what they really wanted to understand is, what impacts do these adverse events have on later outcomes in life? You know, how can we predict how these childhood events might roll out down the road to impact our well-being? And they were astounded to find the direct correlation between the number of adverse events that someone had experienced in their childhood and almost every outcome that they looked at, from substance abuse, obesity, um, depression, all the way to things like cancer, liver disease, and heart disease risk increased the more adversity you'd experience as a child. It's like you said, for an insurance company, they were looking at how, I mean, they're thinking about prevention and how exactly. to get, I mean, the, you and I were talking before we started rolling, the one that, uh, that jumped out at me uh, and stuck with me is the obesity one, that the, yeah. the physician who was one of the lead researchers on this just started noticing as he was doing sort of family history that he, he thought it seemed like a lot of them had child sexual abuse in their, in their past, and as it turned out, 55% of his patients who were obese had been abused sexually as children. Yes, and that was when he first realized there's something going on here and we need to look into it more. Now, so so what do, so why does um, these what, why does it increase risk? I mean, so what what happens or why does this increase the risk of these different things happening to a person as they get older? So we have to think about what happens in our brains. So when we experience threat, our brains prepare us to go into one of three reactions: fight, flight, or freeze. So that means we're either ready to attack, run away, or you know, kind of freeze and hide, become invisible and not let people see us. And our brains prepare us for that by kind of getting our muscles ready to go, our heart rate, go, rate goes up, but our thinking brain at the same time kind of shuts down. So language and problem solving is not something that we need to use when we're in a dangerous situation. We just need to react. And so, the, I mean, and, and fight, flight, freeze is actually something, I mean, we, we were created beautifully that way because exactly. it's, it's a good thing, right? Exactly. In, in a normal situation to, yeah. to help us respond mm -hmm. to dangerous situations. Yeah. And then one of the examples that we use in, in some of the training is we, we talk about if you're driving your car and all of a sudden someone cuts you off and that feeling when you get that, your heart race, you're, you're, you're tense, yeah. you're, you, but you're reacting, you know, maybe without thinking. And so, so when, but when for children who are dealing with, with trauma, that's happening all the time. So what should happen is the danger goes away and our chemicals go back to normal and our language and our logic and our thinking skills turn back on again and we move about our day. 
but our brains are developed so that the parts we use the most become the strongest. So kids who are experiencing adversity over and over and over again and have this response triggered repeatedly, that part becomes the strongest part of their brain and they will go into fight, flight, or freeze much more quickly than you or I might. So what, so what is normal response for them is, I mean, it, it, it's not normal, but it's normal for them. Because exactly. That, and uh, it's protective for them. It's the right way for their brain to work. And we're talking about not just um, being stressed and getting and, and maybe suffering from depression later in life. You're talking about actual of neurological changes, right? Absolutely, the way that the brain develops changes. And in fact, you can see in kids with significant trauma histories, smaller regions of the brain that deal with language, fewer connections in their brain that deal with problem solving and logical decision making and memory. So it's harder for them to do the kinds of tasks that you might want in a classroom. They're gonna have a harder time with the language and the information uh, process. So that's what I wanted to do, uh, sort of the last part before, you know, uh, is to talk about, so what is it, what is, how does it impact a child in school? Oh, gosh. So you're going to see these kids that are going into this fight, flight, or freeze response much more quickly. And it may look like they're not paying attention. They are. They're just paying attention to the wrong things in terms of the educator's perspective. They're, they're looking for danger. S scanning, the, scanning the horizon, looking they're for dangers that, that may not Absolutely. be there, but for them... It feels very, it is, it's very real. It's, it's not just like a fight, flight, or freeze response, it is. They're going into this danger response. They're not able to then take in the information and behave in the way that an educator wants them to. But, but as children, it, it can still be addressed. Here's the good news. The good news is, again, our brains are malleable, especially children's brains. So if we can get them feeling safe and help them to build skills, to build those parts of their brain that control their logic and their language and their decision making, we can absolutely change their trajectory and send them in a different path for their Terrific. future. Well, and that's what we're going to talk about that in the next goal. segment. That is our goal. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion about childhood trauma, but shift the conversation into solutions, particularly in our schools. But first, see if you can answer this question. According to the landmark CDC Kaiser Permanente study, what is the most prevalent adverse childhood experience?